The fourth risk of natural disasters is similar to the previous one. By admitting that it is a risk that could occur more than once during the life of the project, you should also use a function that allows more than binary frequencies. Assume that the disaster expert claims that there could be, on average, two or three natural disaster events during the duration of the project. We insert a Poisson distribution and a 2.5 in its only lambda parameter. Note that the value of this parameter does not necessarily have to be an integer. In this case, it is just the average between 2 and 3, with the cursor on G5, the frequency graph for this risk would look like this. To model the severity of this risk, we will use a gamma distribution. Admissibly, for a distribution like this, a statistical work with available historical information would be required. We use it here for demonstration purposes only. Insert your first alpha parameter of 10 into I5 and your second beta parameter of 100 into J5. The gamma is a function that models the distribution of inter-arrival times for various events in a Poisson-type process. It is also widely used in meteorology to quantify events such as a precipitation, tides, flows, etc. It can be used to model a non-negative value when bias is desired. It is interesting that its two required parameters, alpha times beta, equals the mean. In this way, the severity of this event will have an average of 1,000. 10 times 100. We now go to a risk of a different nature, subcontractor bankruptcies. Again, this is not a happen or do not happen type of risk. Assume there's a list of 30 subcontractors on this project, each of them exposed to the risk of bankruptcy. Let us assume for simplification purposes that all of them have the same bankruptcy probability, which is 5%. There's a distribution that serves exactly this. To count the frequency of events where there are multiple units, the subcontractors, each of them exposed to the same probability of incurring a certain event individually, 5%, the binomial distribution. Select a DT binomial in D6 and insert the two respective parameters. N equals 30, in cell E6 for the number of subcontractors exposed to a risk, and P equals 0 0.05 in cell F6 for the individual probability of bankruptcy. When positioning the cursor on G6, the respective graph will be seen. The binomial models the number of successes in a sequence of n independent files with a certain individual probability p, used to model the risk of events or to transform risk records into simulation models to aggregate them. When looking at the graph, it is observed that there's a 22% probability that there will be no bankruptcies, about 34% probability that exactly one bankruptcy occurs, regardless of the subcontractor, about a 26% chance that exactly two bankruptcies will occur, and so on. That five or more bankruptcies occur, given a set of 30 subcontractors, where each one of them has a 5% probability that the bankruptcy will happen, is highly unlikely. Let's model the severity of this risk with a PERT perk. This is the same as the PERT distribution, but the minimum and maximum parameters are expressed as percentage differences with respect to the mode or most likely value. Write 150 as your first parameter in H6. This is the most likely value or mode. Then in the two adjoining cells, type 0.10 and 1.0. This means that this is a PERT with a most likely value of 150, with a minimum value of 150 minus 10%, that is 135, and with a maximum value of 300, 150 plus 100%. Similar to the previous line, the risk of community problems has been structured as follows. The expert has identified 12 communities surrounding the project that could generate problems for the project. The individual probability that any of them will generate problems is 25%. Therefore, 
a binomial selected in D7 with respective parameters of 12 and 0 0.25 will generate in cells E7 and F7. When you position the cursor over cell G7, you will see the following graph of the risk frequency. Note that the most likely number of events to generate the mode would be 3, with approximately 27% of the cases being generated for this scenario. Generating 7 events or more would barely add up to 1% probability. Let's model the severity of this risk with a triangular perk. This is the same as the triangular distribution, but the minimum and maximum parameters are expressed as percentage differences with respect to the most probable value or mode. Write 500 as your first parameter in I7. This is the most likely value. Then in the two adjoining cells, type 0.10 and 0.50. This means that this is a triangular with a most likely value of 500 with a minimum value of 500 minus 10%, that is 450, and with a maximum value of 750, 500 plus 50%. We will see one last risk, the seventh. Well, we believe that we have already shown the methodology well enough to consider the frequencies and severities of the aggregate risks of the project. At the change order management risk, assume that the expert is unable to assign anything less than the maximum possible uncertainty. That is, it is a scenario where any number of events between one and four change orders could occur with the same probability of occurrence. In other words, it is impossible to assign a higher probability to any of these four possible scenarios. For this reason, we use a uniform integer distribution, int uniform, which assigns equal probability of occurrence to integer events between their minimum and maximum value inserted respectively in cell E8, 1, and cell F8, 4. To model the severity of this risk, we will use a log normal distribution. Once again, as in the case of the gamma, for a distribution like this, a statistical work with available historical information would be required. We use it here for demonstration purposes. Insert your first mu parameter of 500 into I9 and your second parameter sigma of 200 into J9. The log normal distribution is a function that models the product of several random variables, in the same way that the normal distribution is used to model the sum of several random variables. The arguments for this form of logarithmic normal distribution specify the true mean and standard deviation of the distribution. It has a number of desirable properties for modeling real-world processes. It is skewed and has a positive and unlimited range. It can be used to model a non-negative value when positive bias is required. We have now completed the quantitative specification of seven risks. In the next lesson, we will see some details of how, with the complete model, the Monte Carlo simulation is generated and then how the graphs generated by the model are interpreted. At this point, if you want to practice, you can continue filling in the rest of the 13 other risks that are required to complete the model. The other option is to upload the completed workbook that contains the first seven risks that were created in the previous two lessons, plus the additional 13 risks. Either way, the full risk log will look like this. Do not worry about the content of the columns G for frequency and L for severity which will contain values other than yours as they are the columns that precisely generate the random numbers based on the inserted probability distributions. Column M is simply the multiplication of frequency times severity. In cell M2, type the following function, equals G2 times L2. Now, copy this formula down for the remaining 19 output variables of risks. Now. The model must know in advance that these cells in column M must be considered as input variables. Note that an input variable is not necessarily a distribution function. In fact, in this case, the input variable is the multiplication of two distribution functions. In the data sheet, these cells in the range M2 through M21 have already been declared as input variables and therefore their values will be collected during the simulation. In the professional version that allows more than 20 input variables, if you want to add more risk lines starting from row 22, 
risk 21 onwards. You might as well do it, but you have to consider that such sales from column M should be declared as output variables with the DT simulator ribbon icon to include them.